Welcome, this will be video 1.2 over something called significant figures. Now, in chemistry, we actually have to worry about how we report our numbers. In math, you do not have to worry about this. You can put as many numbers down as the calculator tells you. Here, we cannot do that, and that's because our numbers come from measurements. So we're gonna look at this idea of significant figures. There are five rules that we'll uh, quickly go through and then do some examples. Rule number one is that all non-zero numbers are significant. Non-zero meaning anything from one to nine. So notice all three of these would be significant. In this case, we get three significant digits here. Rule two says that zeros between significant figures are significant. And uh, so notice these two zeros, since they're between a six and a five, they are both significant. This number has four significant digits. In other words, all four of these are significant. Now, rule three, four, and five actually deal with zeros. So zeros are gonna be the big discussion. Some zeros are significant, other zeros are not. Rule three says that all final zeros past the decimal point are significant. So here they are, these two zeros. And uh, this is essentially because, say if you were to measure uh, a mass, and the mass was 24, Point zero zero, these are significant because you're saying I know the tenth and the hundredth place to be exactly zero. I know these, that's why you write them down after the decimal place because your instrument has given them to you. So these are significant and we got four significant digits there. Let's do the next slide. Two more uh, rules here. Zeros used in front of numbers are not significant. So Zeros in front uh, are essentially just placeholders. They're uh, there to tell us it's a small number, so we don't care about these. These are actually not significant. This number has two significant figures. Now you have to put those zeros in there to show that it's a tiny number. You can't just get rid of them, but uh, they are not significant. And then finally, zeros at the end of numbers without decimals are not significant. So these two zeros also are not significant. In this case, you also have two significant figures. Now you have to have the zeros in there. You can't just remove them because otherwise you'll get the number 85, which is totally different than a 500. You can't just remove the zeros, but the fact that there is no decimal place shows that they are not significant. In order to make them significant, you would actually put a decimal place in there. So those are the five rules. Why not we try a few example problems? So example uh, three, we're just asking how many significant figures in each of these. Example one, all four of these numbers are non-zero numbers, so they are all significant. We have four significant figures here. Example two, we have a zero that's in the middle, so this zero is significant. So we have three significant figures here. Example three, notice we have a bunch of zeros in front. The zeros in front are never significant. So this one's not, this one's not, this one's not, and this one's not, and we're just left with two significant figures there. Example four, the zero at the end is significant, and that's because it follows a decimal place. We're saying we know this measurement to be exactly 12.0. Not just 12, 12.0. So the fact that we put a zero there means we know that what that number is. So this one has all three of them are significant. And finally, the last one has only two significant digits. This zero is not significant because there is no decimal place. We're saying the number is about 120. It could be 116, it could be 122, but rounded, it's about 120. So this number is not significant. We've got two significant figures there. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, why not you try um, a problem on your own Try this practice problem, pause the video, and try the problem. Let's talk then about how we multiply and divide using uh, significant figures. The rule for multiplication division is pretty simple. You report the answer in the least number of starting significant figures. So here's an example, and then we can talk about this example. We have ourselves two numbers that we're dividing. And if you count, this first number has four significant digits, the second one has three significant digits. So when we decide to report the answer, we have to go by the least. 
since the least is three, we'll have to report our answer in three significant figures. So we'll essentially have to round this number down to three. And notice what we've done. We, since we had to cut it off at three, this one got rounded up to a two because of the nine. So the nine rounded it up to a two, essentially. And you've done rounding, hopefully. The major idea with this rule is your least accurate measurement is what your overall measurement is going to be. You cannot be any more accurate than your least accurate measurement. And that's essentially the, the reason for the rule. So the person that did worse in lab has really uh, dragged everyone down. Think of it that way. When you're uh, adding or subtracting, there's a similar uh, rule. And it says report the answer to the least number of starting decimal places. In this case, it's decimal places that we worry about. When you're adding and subtracting, then you take a look at the decimal place. The first number has one decimal place. This is the tenths spot. The second number has three decimal places, and the third number has two. When you combine all these, you can only report it to the least, in this case, just to the first decimal place. That's why we're going to put point 0.9 here. And again, we're going to round. So notice how this 8 got rounded up to a 9 because of that 7 that's behind it. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, we'll do a few examples as well. A quick, uh, before we do examples, a quick uh, explanation of rounding. You should have uh, this knowledge, but if you don't, simply anything followed by a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we would round up, and anything by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we would round down. Essentially, just like you've done in math. So rounding will be important. We'll have to consider rounding these numbers. OK, why not we try uh, a few examples? So what we've done is we've done some calculations here, and we're asking to round these calculations to the right number of significant figures. Remember, the rule is you go by the least starting. So since we're dividing in the first two numbers, this number has three significant figures. This one has four significant figures. So we would round down to three significant digits. We have to go by the least. So we cut it off right here. Our answer would actually be 18.9. Notice we went by the least. When you're multiplying, same idea in example two. The first number has three significant digits. The second one has two. Remember, the zero is significant because of that decimal point. So we have to round our answer down to two. Now, we can't just put. 33, we can't just get rid of that 2 because that would create, that would completely change the number from 332 uh, down to 33. We have to essentially make this 2 into a 0, and the answer would be 330. And now this number has two significant figures because 2 is the least. How about if we subtract or add? Example 3 is addition. So we go by the least number of decimal places. The first number has two decimal places. The second number has four decimal places, so our answer should be just two decimal places. So we'll cut our answer off here. We'll have to consider rounding since the seven will round up the one to a two. So this answer is 4.32. And the final example is subtraction. Here we've got uh, three decimal places on the first number and just one decimal place on the second number. So we'd have to round down to just one decimal place, or in this case, we've round up. The 5 would round up. So our answer is 12.2. Now notice something. Uh, our answer has actually three significant digits, even though our least is 2. That's because with subtraction, we go not by the total number of figures, but by the decimal places. So we match because we have one decimal place and one decimal place. And that's really what's important. This wraps up for us uh, video 1.2.